Alright, today we're going to talk about molar mass versus average atomic mass, and then we're going to do one more calculation involving the mole. These notes can go right under your last page of notes. So, molar mass versus average atomic mass, they are the same number. It is the decimal on the periodic table, but you use a different unit because they represent two different things. The molar mass is equal to grams per mole and represents how many grams are in one mole of a substance. So basically what that's saying is if I have one mole sorry, getting my pen out if I have one mole which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of something I'll know exactly how many grams that something weighs by looking at the periodic table. The average atomic mass, whose units are AMUs, atomic mass units, uh, and it represents the number of protons and neutrons, and it's the average number of protons and neutrons in every isotope in the known universe. Remember, that is different than mass number. Mass number is always a whole number, never a decimal. And mass number is talking about one specific isotope. Give everyone another 30 seconds or so. All right, so molar mass and average atomic mass are the same number. They both come from the decimal on the periodic table, but they're used in two different ways. We're going to talk about the way you use molar mass right now. Keep in mind that at any point in time, if I'm going too fast, you can just pause this video until everyone's caught up. Alright, so to get the molar mass or average atomic mass for a molecule, add up all of the molar masses or average atomic masses from each element. So now we're talking about molecules, and a molecule is two or more elements bonded together. So to get the molar mass or average atomic mass for a molecule, add up all the molar masses or average atomic masses of each element. So right now we need to calculate the molar mass of H2SO4. Alright, so the first thing we're going to have to do is talk about each individual mass. And so the first way we're going to do this is hydrogen. I know that hydrogen has an average atomic mass or molar mass of 1. And I know that I have two hydrogens. So that 2 is right there. This one comes from the periodic table. And now I continue and I say those things plus however much sulfur weighs. Sulfur looks like it weighs 32 grams per mole on the periodic table plus however much oxygen weighs, which is 16, times 4. That 4 right there. We have 4 oxygens, so we need 16 times 4 oxygens. We have only 1 sulfur, so we don't need to multiply by anything. Hydrogen weighs 1, and we have 2 hydrogens. Now we observe PEMDAS, and so 1 times 2 for our hydrogens is 2 
plus 32 for our sulfur, plus 16 times 4 is 64. When we add all of those up, it looks like it's going to be 98 grams per mole. Final answer. So we've calculated the molar mass of H2SO4, 98 grams per mole. All right, we're going to attempt that with one more, and then I'm really teaching you this to teach you the next thing. So the last thing we're going to do is calculate the molar mass of magnesium nitrate. So MgNO3-2. Take a second to write that down, and then we'll start solving the problem. Alright, so here we go, magnesium nitrate. As I look at the periodic table, I see that magnesium weighs 24.3 grams per mole. Remember, we use the decimal numbers, just hydrogen happened to be just about 1, sulfur happened to be just about 32, and oxygen happened to be just about 16, so those were all whole numbers. But when they aren't really nicely rounded to the tenths place, you have to give a decimal, and so 24.3 is what I got for magnesium. Then we're going to add that to, and remember that this 2, just like any number on the outside of a parenthesis, gets distributed. So technically that 2 gets distributed to the nitrogen, so we now have 2 nitrogens, and the 2 gets distributed to the oxygen, so we now have 6 oxygens. So the way we'll solve this, Nitrogen weighs 14, but we now have two of them, so it's 14 times 2, plus oxygen weighs 16, but now we have six of them, so times 6, and so I'm going to continue this work right up in this space where I have lots of room. So now, I have my 24.3 plus 28, my 14 times 2, plus 16 times 6, which is 96. So when I add all those up, 24 plus 96 is 120.3 plus 28. So this should be 148.3 grams per mole. All right. So we've learned how to do this so that we can solve the next step in mole problems. So we have one more slide, and we'll solve some problems. Actually, we have two more slides. Sorry I lied to you. All right, so mole notes part two. We've already taken some notes on the mole. These will be our second round of notes on the mole. We're going to talk about conversions with compounds. You need to find the molar mass of the entire compound in order to convert. That's why we just spent some time learning how to find the molar mass of an entire compound. And then you use that newfound molar mass to convert from mass to atoms or moles. And so our first problem will look something like this. How many atoms are in 325 grams of hydroiodic acid, HI? All right, so how many atoms are in 325 grams of HI? We'll start with our lonely number. 325 grams of HI, 325 grams of HI. It is very important to write these, because in just a short amount of time, we will be going from one compound to the other, and you need to remember which compound you're starting with and which one you're going to. So it is very important to write what compound we're working with. All right, so now we'll open up some parentheses. 
only one way to cancel out grams of HI, and that's putting grams of HI on the bottom. Can't go from grams directly to atoms, you need a stepping stone, and we have a really nice stepping stone in the mole. So moles of HI. Moles are always one. Grams, in order to figure out how many grams of HI there are in one mole, we need to remember that hydrogen weighs one gram per mole, and iodine from the periodic table weighs 126.9, I believe. So when we add those up, we get 127.9 grams of hydroiodic acid per mole. Now we've canceled out the grams of HI. One last step. Only one way to cancel out moles of HI. It's with moles of HI. And now we can go to atoms of HI. One mole, as always. And atoms, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. Oops. And when you multiply across, you'll get 325 divided by 127.9 times 6.02, and you'll get 15.29. Times 10 to the 23rd, and that's a B plus answer. An A plus answer would be, since we have only three sig figs here, our answer can have only three sig figs, so that would be 15.3 times 10 to the 23rd. That's like an A minus answer. The best answer would be 1.53 times 10 to the 24th atoms of HI. Uh, we will brush up on scientific notation before you're required to do anything like that. If you already know how to do that, you'll be fine. If not, we'll learn it and you'll be fine as well. So, the A plus answer is 1.53 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Alright, we have two more problems to work through and then you guys will be able to work on your own. Here we go. Okay, first problem says, if I have 3.45 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of NaCl, how many grams is that? Well, we have our lonely number, so we start there. We have 3.45 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of NaCl. There is only one way to cancel atoms of NaCl is with atoms of NaCl. And so we'll have atoms of NaCl on the bottom. And we can't go directly to grams, we have to go to moles. So we will have moles of NaCl on top. Always one mole. For atoms, it is always 6 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. Next step. Only one way to cancel out moles of NaCl. That is with moles of NaCl. And now we can finally go to grams of NaCl. And for every one mole of NaCl, we have to figure out how much Na and Cl weigh. Take a second and figure that out on your own.
give you about 15 more seconds to locate Na and Cl and to tell me what their average atomic masses are or what their grams per mole are. I'm going to start working. If you're still working, you can continue working. I found Na to weigh about 23 grams, and I found Cl to weigh about 35.5 grams. If you put 35.45, perfectly acceptable. So those two added together look to be 58.5 grams per mole. So now that we have that information, we will have 58.5 grams per mole. All right, and then what we need to do is divide across. Fortunately, when you divide times 10 to the 23rd by times 10 to the 23rd, they cancel out. So what we really have is 3.45 divided by 6.02 times 58.5. And when you do that, let me grab my calculator. You can be calculating as I calculated as well. 3.45, I bet nobody grabbed a calculator. I see you guys. Times 58.5 divided by 6.02 that equals when I calculated it out as so many of you surely did I get 33.5 grams of NaCl and it looks like since we had three sig figs one two three we should have three sig figs one two, three. So 33.5 grams NaCl, good answer. Alright, I'm going to have you work through this last one on your own. The molecule we'll be working with is ozone. That molecule O3 is what makes up our ozone layer. So, if I have 4.5 moles of ozone, how many grams is that? Since we're starting with moles, keep in mind this is only a one-stepper, because from moles you can go to anything you want. So this will only be one step. Go ahead and pause the video, take a couple minutes to solve this on your own, and then play the video and you can see how I solved it. Alright, now that you've had a few minutes, maybe one or two, to solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and solve it. Should have had 4.5 moles of O3. Open up some parentheses only one way to cancel out moles of O3 that is with moles of O3 and it asks how many grams we can go to grams of O3 we have one mole of O3 oxygen weighs 16 grams per mole and we have three oxygens so we'll multiply that by three and 16 times 3 is equal to 48 So now our final answer is just 4.5 times 48. I'm sure you've all already calculated it out, so give me a moment. 4.5 times 48 equals... I got 216 grams of O3. That's a B-plus answer, because our lonely number has only two sig figs, so our answer can have only two sig figs. So really what we got was about 220 grams of O3. Final answer. All right, go ahead and get started on that worksheet. If you get this and your family solved it and feel like you solved it all correctly, I'd like you to move around the room and help anyone who needs assistance. Do not be shy to ask for help. Do not be shy to give help. This is a group effort. Thanks very much. See you guys tomorrow.